Excellency, the President of the Federal Republic, President Muhammad Ubari, GCFR, the Vice President, Professor Yeni Osibadjo, GCON. I'd like to I have a speech here to read, but I'd like to crave the indulgence of Mr. President and Mr. Vice President to permit me to call on um, Assad to please give the um, word of thanks. Thank you. I will conclude my speech uh, much later to the press. Thank you. The President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, President Muhammad Jabouari, GCFR, the Vice President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Professor Yemi Oshibaja, GCON. If you wouldn't mind if I do not use protocol, I would like to mention my governor, Senator Ibukule Amosun, CON, FCA, and I would also like to mention my king, Alaki of Egbaland, of Agbadebo. And I want to thank Brother Kola for giving me this opportunity. It is difficult to try to stand in the shoes of a giant, of one of the greatest human beings that the world ever had. But that is the responsibility that I bear today. And indeed, even for MKO Abiola, it was difficult to imagine how he would speak to Nigeria in his inauguration speech. My mom told me how he would stand in front of the mirror, he was preparing the speech because the results were coming in and he thought he was going to be able to deliver it. And you know, he used to stammer. So he would start, fellow Nigerians, and he never really got past fellow Nigerians. He would say a few words, he said, no, no, not like that, and he would start again. And he kept struggling to, say, to think what to say to the people of Nigeria. Because all MKO ever wanted to say to the Nigerian people, and all MKO ever did say to the people of Nigeria is, I love you, the people of Nigeria. I believe in you, the people of Nigeria. He was born Yoruba, but he loved Hausa people, Kanuri people. He loved ethnic people, Igbo people. He loved all, everywhere. Just, you just needed to be Nigerian, and Enko was your man. If he could help, he would do. There were so many things he already did to show, and that was why the people of Nigeria rewarded him with the mandate of June 12, 1993. But we know that he was never able to deliver that speech. But in many ways, the events that transpired later revealed to Nigeria the eloquence in his heart, the fidelity of his commitment, and even his own deep abiding wish that if there were any way that his own actions would in any way compromise the people of Nigeria, MKO wanted, would pre prefer to die. He preferred to leave the earth 
rather than compromise on you, on your integrity as a people, on your sovereignty as a nation. Which was why, even the day before he died, when he was still being pressured, he asked the question, how do you shave a people's head in their absence? He knew he was present in the room where he was being pressured, but he knew that so long as he refused to allow his own head to be shaved as a symbolic message to you, the people of Nigeria, that you would be safe. And when he died, we accepted his body and had watched in Nigeria as year after year after year after year till now the 25th year you the people have suffered and he was not recognized at all. President Muhammad Buhari, Nelson Mandela it was who said it always seems impossible until it is done. Who would have ever believed, given the relationship that you had with Chief N.K. Adiola, that you would be the instrument God would use to honor this man and to bring reconciliation and healing to the country? You apologized to my family, and it touched my heart. You know that I lost also my mother in this struggle. So that apology meant so much. Let me use the, this opportunity on behalf of Chief N.K. Rabiola, because I know what he would have done. Let me use this opportunity to apologize to you, to apologize to your family, for anything that he might have done to harm you and to harm your family. I want to round up because I'm sure I'm well past my three minutes. But let me also say at this juncture that Chief N.K. Rabiola was so committed to us saying farewell to poverty in Nigeria. And today we have more people in poverty in Nigeria than we had in 1993. I read the statement that you made where you said that you prepare now to wage a battle to, for the defense of the people of Nigeria against those people who think of themselves as the landlords of Nigeria. Let me say to you that by recognizing June 12, you are waking so many heroes of Nigeria's struggle and heroines who have shown because they stood firm on June 12, that money cannot buy them. If there's any march that we need to march, they will march. If there's any protest that we need to be present at, they will protest. You have called up your own new army for the defense of this country. And President Muhammad Dubari, this fight will not take you, God willing, as it has taken MQ, but let us fight and bring about the conclusion of MKO's struggle that the Nigerian people should be the ones in full control of this country. It is not for a few landlords, whoever they may be. It is for the 200 million people of Nigeria. I thank you, Mr. President.